Okay, here is uh, how to produce a Camtasia video. Once you get the video recorded, there are a couple little things I like to do to make it run a little better and make it work better in Blackboard. So, open Camtasia Studio. And there's Camtasia Studio 7. Open it up and click run. There's the splash screen. Depending on the speed of your computer, uh, the amount of time it takes to open up will vary. I like to maximize my screen just so it's easy to find things. Uh, first thing you want to do is find your Camtasia uh, recording. So click on import media. And now, I do this all the time, so it went right to the uh, folder that I uh, have all my videos in. And you can see all my finished videos there. And I save them as MP4s because those play very well in Blackboard. And almost any browser can play it. Uh, you do need a QuickTime plugin, but the browsers on campus generally work. Uh, Firefox tends to work better than Internet Explorer for some reason. Uh, Chrome and Opera and Safari also work. So I'm uh, just going to double click it and you see the video appears. Now since I make videos every day um, I have a naming scheme. You want to come up with your own naming scheme. So my course, the uh, section, the date. Notice I go year, month, day because that way when you sort by name it sorts them in chronological order and then the camrec extension that tells you that that's a Camtasia Studio uh, recording camrec Camtasia recording so you can just click and drag it to your timeline this thing down here is your timeline and you'll notice that uh, it fills up the timeline okay. and uh, then you want to set the dimensions. Now, I do full screen recordings, which is um, on my other computer, which is 1280 by 800 pixels. And I decide that I like when it's about 850 pixels wide, uh, which is good because students tend to have a, a minimum of a 1024 by 768 monitor, the ones in the computer labs are huge and you don't have to worry about pixel uh, the size of your recording but I want the biggest recording I can get uh, and still fit on a regular screen so I have found that 850 is a good size so notice that this box says keep aspect ratio to keep that box checked and then I set the width to 850 and notice then the height automatically adjust to maintain the same aspect ratio. I used to do it in 900 wide but then I found that uh, when you played in Blackboard because of the extra bar on the side in Blackboard uh, you would have to use the scroll bar on the bottom of your browser to get the whole thing in frame and sometimes the bottom would get cut off which is where you can uh, fast forward and pause so I, I made it a little bit smaller. Keep that in mind when you're recording that uh, what is going to be played is going to be seen a little bit smaller than what you see on your screen. So click OK. Now notice there are two audio tracks. The first one is for your microphone uh, and the second one is the internal one from sounds that come from within the computer and this is just a couple of beeps that I don't need so I'm gonna click on it and delete it it might reduce the size of your uh, final video a little bit um, so I do it I'm not positive on that it's certainly not gonna make it any bigger now there's a couple of effects that I like to do now I walk around so that the web uh, not the web the laptop microphone uh, 
doesn't catch everything the same way if I'm standing right in front of it like I am now, loud and clear. But if I go over to the side, then you notice that it's not as loud. So what I do is I select my audio track, click it, then I go to audio. And if you don't see a particular tool button, click on more. And there's only one here because this is a fairly wide screen. If, for example, uh, let's make the screen a little smaller. Notice now you click more and there's a lot of different buttons there. Okay, so I'm just going to maximize my window again just to make my life easy. Go to audio. And then where it says enable volume leveling, uh, it keeps the, the volume from where it's quiet, gets a little louder, where it's loud, gets a little quieter, so it balances it out. So I enable that, and then you notice down here, that gets really small, and that worries me. I don't know why. So I always do high volume variation. Now, even if it already says high volume variation, go click on it, and then you'll see the, uh, the sounds expand and have a little bit larger range. I think they'll be a little louder. So now the volume is adjusted, and I want to add some cursor effects. And this is something to keep in mind when you are recording that um, move your mouse and use it as a pointer to point to things you want, and I'll show you why. So use your cursor effects. See, notice that there's this um, little uh, highlight uh, around your cursor. So you can use that when you play back. So that by using the mouse cursor as a pointer, then you can actually direct the user of your video to you know, what you want to draw their attention to. So I click on cursor effects. And the cursor size, I make it a little bit bigger. I go with 1.2. I've experimented. And that's a pretty good size. It's not so big that it's obtrusive, but it's a little bigger than regular uh, standard size. So it does draw the attention to it. And then I'm going to add a highlight effect. And I just do highlight. You can see what spotlight does. Spotlight dims everything around it. I don't like that. And then magnify, which again, I don't want that either. So I go with highlight. Now, there's also a little arrow here that indicates there's some kind of a submenu, and click that on the highlight effect. And I'm going to use my scroll bar so you can see it better. And the size of this highlight area, I have found that 25 works very well. And I leave the opacity at 100% and the soft edge at 5. I don't really know what the soft edge is. But the opacity, obviously, is, is um, how opaque is it. Uh, now, since I was giving some instructions on doing specific tasks on the computer, I am going to add mouse le left-click effect and a right-click effect. So I'm going to select rings. Rings are the most visible. And notice when I click the little submenu arrow here that the color is red the size is 20 as far as how wide it goes and the duration is 0.8 seconds uh, it seems pretty good so now I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to select a right click effect uh, I used to do warp but warp is not as visible so I do rings and notice when I click on the right click effect, it selects blue for me. So once you select the rings and rings, you actually don't need to select the uh, submenus. Um, and since I want students to notice the clicks, I will add click sounds. So a left click will sound like a mouse click, which is a little louder than a laptop click. And then I leave the volume set to maximum, the right click. I use the laptop click to try to help distinguish a left from a right click. One thing that Camtasia does not do is use a drag 
<coughs> excuse me. Um, and in Screencast-O-Matic, the free web-based uh, screencasting tool, it's kind of funny that that one actually will distinguish between a left click and a left a click and a drag. A click would be a ring, and a drag would fill in the whole ring. Um, I don't know why. That's all you need as far as special effects. So now we're going to go to produce the video. So we go to the down arrow key or just click on produce and share. And I use custom settings and I'll show you the ones that I use. So I select custom settings. Notice that the dimensions default to um, whatever the size you selected as the size of the video that you're producing. So I'll click next and now this automatically goes to my uh, previous whatever you set it for last time that's what it'll go on what I'll select so I use mp4 FLV SWF flash outputs and then notice I don't have anything else selected uh, if you wanted to create a separate mp3 only file you can do that uh, you can create an m4v that's a, an iPod file or an iPhone file. I, I don't want either of those. I don't think what I say is all that interesting that you really want it. Listen to it uh, on your MP3 player or watch it on your phone. So I'll go to next. And uh, since we're playing it in Blackboard, um, we do not need a separate site with site controls on it. So for the controller, I select no controls. So it will use the blackboard controls and notice the theme grays out because that would be the theme of the kind of controls you use. The file format, make sure you select MP4. Uh, those seem to work very well in the widest variety of contexts and players. And then the video size, which is what we already set. And if you click on flash options, do that just to make sure that you have the same settings that I have here. The frame rate, I use their automatic frame rate. In other words, how many frames per second. If you're playing full motion video, I'm going to tell you it's going to be choppy. Also, if you play full motion video with sound and you activate the microphone, which you're going to do because you want to talk, uh, you will get a distinct echo. And I didn't realize this till recently. And so you would need to go to that part of the file and listen to the audio track uh, from just the microphone. If that was sufficient, then I would delete the audio to track. Uh, you'll probably have to delete one or the other, you know, that portion of the audio so that you don't have both audio channels playing at the same time. Uh, key frame rate every five seconds. That, the key frame rate what that is, is a keyframe, is it's a uh, Camtasia, like, takes a snapshot and says, okay, I will render this entire frame. And then, between then and the next keyframe, what Camtasia will do is just encode the changes from that keyframe. And so, it doesn't have to record, it doesn't have to save every bit of information of every frame. So it make that allows you to get a much uh, smaller file. My 75-minute classes, which uh, typically I'll have about an hour and 10 minutes of video. If I don't play any YouTube videos or anything like that or full motion videos from a DVD, um, the final file will be somewhere in the 50 megabyte range. They are not tiny, but compared to over a gigabyte for the uh, camrec file and it's a lot smaller so the encoding mode we select quality uh, I leave it halfway in between which is 50 percent background color I leave it black um, the audio uh, you can change this obviously the higher quality of the audio the larger um, file you will have I leave it at 28 kilobits per second and then for multiple file output I don't have anything here so I would just open those options just to make sure that you have uh, what I have 
and if you don't make the appropriate changes. So now we're done with the uh, flash options. We'll go to next. Okay, video info options. So this is uh, the title, BACS 300 uh, section 22 and uh, 2011 2011 10 11 now here's a little trick that you can use when you're moving from field to field within a form uh, tab to the next field then shift tab back notice that that whole title is highlighted control C and now I've copied that because I'm gonna need to enter that uh, title again because that's what I'm gonna name my file the date um, just to make sure it's less confusing I always set my date to the same date as the recording rather than the current date um, you can enter your author information um, I don't enter any iTunes information I'm not planning on playing it in iTunes or uploading it to iTunes marketplace click OK when you're done go to next oh make sure that um, uh, I don't want a watermark so and then I'll go to next I don't really care that it says Camtasia on it and now see the production name notice that it's highlighted and I'm gonna control V to paste that title that I copied and what folder do you want to save it in now since I record a lot of the my BACS 300 um, videos so the last one I did was a BACS 300 video so what goes into that folder but click on the folder to open and browse your folders and you can go anywhere you want put it on your desktop put it wherever you want so I put it in my BACS 300 Camtasia folder I save it and then um, I want to see the production results when I'm done so it'll bring up a, a window like this and it'll tell me exactly how long it is how big it is blah 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 uh, and notice check this out before you uh, click finish um, that it's going into the correct folder it's got the correct file name notice it has the mp4 extension on it and then when you're done you click finish and notice that my project is now rendering and so you can see that's tenths of a percent it takes a while this was a 75 minute class it'll probably take uh, somewhere between a half an hour to an hour uh, it could take two hours um, depending on your computer this is a powerful computer I have a um, an i7 portable process uh, low voltage processor and I have 8 gigs of RAM and I have a solid state hard drive and uh, I have a separate graphics processor so this goes pretty fast on my other machine which is about uh, three years old it's uh, has a not an i7 or i5 it's a dual core or core 2 duo processor and I do have 8 gigs of RAM Camtasia will use only at most 4 gigs of RAM uh, anyway and that computer it will take oh instead of maybe a half an hour on this computer it'll take up to about two hours um, and part of that is um, also your uh, the processing will take a lot of your CPU power You'll see what I mean if I do control alt delete and I go to task manager and in my task manager you can see the applications running and if I look at processes and I click to sort by CPU you can see that Camtasia Studio is using 70 uh, over 70 percent of my CPU power 
and you can look at how much memory it's using. So it really sucks a lot of resources. If you don't have a very powerful computer and you're trying to do something else, it's going to run really, really, really slow. Also, your fan will run a lot more often if your computer tends to run hot. But if you're running a laptop, make sure you have a good laptop cooler because uh, otherwise I've had my other computer overheat and there is a heat breaker and it just shuts your computer off when it gets too hot. And then, of course, you have to start all over. So, uh, don't do that. And uh, in case your computer does run too hot, here's a little tip. So now in this task manager under processes, I'm going to click Camtasia Studio to select it. I'm going to right click and scroll down to set affinity. And this says, Notice I can choose how many processors it's going to use. Um, I have two processors on my other computer, so I select, um, I uncheck the all processors, and then I just select one of those processors. And it takes longer to render it, but I don't overheat anymore. So that's a solution. It only took me about a week to find that on a discussion forum somewhere. Also, uh, if you get an out of memory um, message, you can write an email to Camtasia about that and they will send you a little patch to run which will allow Camtasia to access up to four gigs of RAM. Uh, without it, I believe it only will access two gigs of RAM, which means it's going to take longer to process and you may run out of memory. So I'm going to cancel do that and that's it.